Today's date is 3-17-2021. The class we're doing today, this is part one, is repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And what we're going to do now is pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you to open our minds, put a hedge of protection around us, and teach us your word and write your word on our hearts and our minds. And in Jesus' name we pray. And what we're talking about is repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. What it is, this is where God is always near us. Now if we turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, God is telling us, real simple in his own word. And Jason, if you don't mind reading that, I appreciate it. Second Timothy two two. Uh Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Okay, so what God is saying here. His scripture is breathed and is useful for teaching, reproof, which means to correct, correction, and training for rightness. Now, the way we recognize the truth of 2 Timothy 3.16 is to let it be our guide when we read scripture. In other words, like when you go on a tour guide, there's a person there to guide you. So what you're going to do here, you're going to let the Holy Spirit guide you in God's Word. That's why it's so important to have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to be our Torah guide in the Word of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And this is... This will show you multiple times where or how important it is and how God is telling us how near he is. Chase, if you don't mind reading that, I appreciate it. Sure. Sir. <clears throat> Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. No, uh, Matthew... Chapter 3, verse 2. And saying, repeat ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There you go. He's telling you to repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. Okay. Now, let's look at Matthew 4, 4. This is very important. It goes hand in hand with what we're talking about here. That's Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answers and says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Exactly. Why is it that Jesus is saying, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God? First, we know bread doesn't last forever. Two, Bread doesn't have truth, but God does. When God speaks, it happens. Well, like I said before, things of this world are temporal. There the you things go. Things of heaven or the things of the kingdom are eternal. There you go. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. Yeah, verses 12 through 17. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into pr prison, he departed into Galilee. And now leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast and in the borders of Zabia and Napalia, that, is must, that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by Esau the prophet, saying, the land of Zabia and the land of Nepidoth, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great lights, and to them which sat in the regions of shadows of death, 
light is sprung up. 17. From the time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, do you see where he says in 16, The people who live in darkness have seen a great light? These are the sinners. The sinners have seen a great light. Okay. Yeah, we were all those sinners. We were sitting in light. Every, I mean, darkness. We, all of us, were sitting in darkness before we accepted Christ. Before we heard the good news. And in this case, the land of Zebulun and Nephilim, they, they worshipped the demons. And a lot of times when they worshipped demons back then, they cut themselves, they would cut parts off of them, they would take their, their children or their babies and, and pass them through the fire like a pizza, like a pizza oven. They just pass them into the fire, and then, uh, and that's, a, that's another study in itself, but that's what they did. They were worshiping demons, and when Christ came, he brought light with him. And that's what I said. When, that's what it says. That's what he is saying, uh, that light has come to darkness. And then right here, on, when you, when Jason, when you read um, verse 16, like I said, verse 16, it popped out at me as, look, I was that one sitting in darkness. Because we don't pass our babies through the fire like they did or cut ourselves, all that sort of stuff. But the society, all societies all around the world, do abortions. There's very few. I think the Muslims are one of the only ones that don't do abortions. As far as I know, they could somewhere, but you know what I mean? But um, we are the ones that sit in darkness, and we were full of darkness, and we were full of evil as fact. Because if you go back and you look at uh, Adam, Adam, um, oh, well, everybody, you know, because he sinned, him and Eve sinned, everyone from that point after they sinned, after they were kicked out of the garden, all of the humans, all of the children that were born were born into sin. And so that's what I'm saying. All of these people were born into, into sin. Every one of us were. So we were literally dead walking. We were dead men, men and women walking until we accepted Christ, right? I mean, that goes That's another story in itself. That's another study, but... Okay, so you heard what Ian Kathy said. Yes. Now you know why John the Baptist said repent, and you know why Jesus said repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now we know light and darkness can't be in the same room together. Okay? So if the kingdom of heaven has come near... And it's all good with no evil. How can evil be there next to the kingdom of heaven? It's not. It's not. So what must you do? You must repent. So in other words, when you repent, you're humbling yourself. You're asking for forgiveness of sins known and unknown. You're turning the darkness into lightness. Well, you can't do anything. No, it's from the Holy from. You Holy can't do anything. The thing is, you're asking God to forgive you. Because you want to repent of your sins, known and unknown. So when you stand before him, you're like a, a piece of paper that is white with no blemish. Right. Before. Okay. You're, you're, you're totally clean in front of him. This way the enemy can't come up and say, oh, I hold this against you. When the Savior comes and said, well, no, my child already asked for forgiveness of this sin, known and unknown. So if they couldn't remember something. And forgot about sin. This is my opinion only. And you say, this is why it's so important to do it every day. Every day when you wake up. Ask for forgiveness of sin known and unknown. Because you might have forgot one. You might have forgot a couple sins you committed. You might not even have known you done it. Exactly. So if you <laughs> repent, then the enemy can't hold it against you. Right. And this keeps the darkness from coming in. See, the only time that God, God never walks away. Let me re rephrase that. God never walks away. It's us that walks away. True. And sometimes I'm going to say like this one pastor said. Sometimes God wants to talk to us, but we're too busy talking. So God wants to tell us sometimes to be quiet and listen. Because he even says in his word, be still and know that I am God. Right. Sometimes we just need to play out, shut up, and listen to God and say, okay, God, I'm listening to you. What is it you want to tell me? Right. But some, you know, that comes with humbling yourself and growing in the Lord. And, and, and by 
humbling yourself and growing in the Lord, you got to be in the Word. Because the more you get into the Word, the more knowledge you get. And the more knowledge you get, the closer you get to God. Mm -hmm. And the more of a relationship you have with God. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. You ready? As, yep, yep, yes, and as he go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, there we go again. As you go, proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near. As you go out and share the gospel, the word of God with other people. Okay? As you go, proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near. You hear those people that, like Robert says um, all the time, usually, he'll say, uh, uh, I'm an ambassador for Christ, uh, where I go, the kingdom goes. Well, if you're Holy Spirit filled, and Holy Spirit is the very nature of God, he, he's right and true. It is true that wherever you go, the kingdom goes with you. Isn't that awesome? Is it, it is awesome. Is it awesome revelation? It you is. Know? It's very awesome. Now we're going to go to Romans 10.8. That's Romans 10.8, chapter 10, verse 8. <clears throat> I'm going to need a new Bible pretty soon. <laughs> I don't know how to use this one out. But what said it there, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Mm -hmm. So our faith is as close as our breath, which means Holy Spirit is as close as our breath. And we know Holy Spirit is near God's very nature, so there God we is go. as close as, as that. And uh, literally, even if you turn your back on, he's always there because it's his... It's his spirit, it's his, literally, it's his breath that keeps us moving and gives us life, gives us animation. So wherever we go, he's still there. It's like King David said, where can I go that your spirit's not there? So even if we turn our back on us, he's still with us, but we walked away. And that's how you can explain that. So all you have to do is say, forgive me, and he's right back listening to you again. Because he hears the word forgive me, forgive me, the words forgive me, and he sees your heart. So if you're doing it just to play church, or if you're just doing it just because somebody says you better, you better repent. Well, okay, I repent. Well, that's not heartfelt. I mean, if you're forced to say it, right? You know, it's, See, he wants a pure heart, and you can't hide from God. He when wants you, all of you. He doesn't want half of you. That's why he said he doesn't want. He part wants of a you. right. Oh, I'm sorry. You, and then it, you know, see, he don't want part. He don't want part of you. He wants all of you. And in turn, he gives you a hundred percent plus. Because remember, he he gave his son. So God is, you know, God's given and given and given. We, you know, we have to accept it. So all we do is free for us. But it didn't. It wasn't free for God. God lost his son. God gave his son, right? And then Jesus Christ, his son you know, gave up his earthly life. So if people would realize that, they would uh, they'd say, well, wait a minute. You know, he did all this for me. Let me do for him. Because literally, you know, he wants all of us. He, man made religion. God made relationship. But see, he wants your heart. He don't want part of it. Right, and here's the problem with people. It's not their son who died on the cross. I Period. Think, oh, yeah, you were given a revelation on that, right? It's not their son that died on the cross. Mm -hmm. So they really don't care. Imagine your child being nailed to the cross. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing as a dad. Nothing as a mother. That's your child. Let me, let me interject something here. Something I heard uh, Mark Lowry say. He said, yeah, think about this. He said, his, Mary... 
didn't say, utter a word. See, it's not written down in the word she uttered anything, right? When John the Baptist was beheaded and her and uh, Elizabeth came, and because they had to come and they had to collect the body of John the Baptist when Herod cut his head off, right? Killed him. And Herod didn't want to do that. It was his pride that made him do that. So he could look good in front of his friends. So anyhow, when he did that, Elizabeth came because that by that time, when John the Baptist and they fled, and you know, it's, it's a longer story, but uh, Herod had, because Zachariah, his father was a priest, had him killed by the altar, between the altars. So anyhow, that's what happened. So when she come, the mother came to collect him, Mary said, well, Mary was with her, from what I understand, and um, Elizabeth said, if this happened to my son, what's going to happen to yours? And they knew that they were from God because Jesus and, and John the Baptist was uh, born with Holy Spirit. See, so there, there you go again. But they still had a choice. When you have Holy Spirit living in you, even you accept Christ, and you ask for Holy Spirit indwelling, and that happens, you can you still got the choice to serve God or go off on your own. I don't know how people can literally do that. And Holy Spirit will work with you until you are until you continuously, re, you know, reject Him. And that's another study in itself. But you think about that. In the scripture, she didn't utter a word. It was Jesus when he was on the cross and he was right before he took his last breath and said it was finished and then he gave up the ghost right, right there. Right before that, he seen John because John was standing there <clears throat> while he was on, while they crucified him and put him up on the cross. Or He was standing there and Mary was standing there and Mary didn't say a word, but Jesus looked at the love that Jesus had while he was in so much agony, could barely breathe and shed his blood, hanging, hanging up there. He looked at both of them. He, he said, John, your mother, looked at her, looked at Mary, his mother, and said, you know, Mary, your, uh, your son. And then from that word says from that time on, he took her home with him and she stayed there with them. And so it doesn't say much anything else in any of the scriptures, any of the writings that I've ever seen. But you, you think about that. She didn't utter a word. How could you stand there and just, I don't know. You know what I mean? That was faith because she knew who Jesus was. She knew where he came from. You know what I mean? So this is where faith is. We have got to get to the point and, and I have learned a lesson. I'm talking to myself, too. We've got to get to a point where we have so much trust and belief, which equals faith in our Creator, in our Creator's written word, and stand on His word and read His word back to Him and claim it. Because, look, He told us this stuff. He said, I'm healed. He said, I will live and not die. He said, occupy you till you occupy until I come. You know, I mean, all these promises that he said, he said his promises are yes and amen, Corinthians here. But the thing is, we have got to get to the point where we have such a relationship that it's unbreakable. No matter what the demonics do, you know, like, like what they did the other night to me. So there's no matter what they do, it doesn't break our faith. It's just like Job, where Job was tempted, has lost everything, lost even his health, was sitting in a pile of heap, heap of uh, ash, and, and taking charge. They said what he did is he took uh, broken pottery and he was, uh, he, was, he was scraping off the boils and the worms that were coming out of the boils. And yet he did not curse God. You see what I mean? We have got to get to a point where we trust God. And then bring up Job again. One more thing, I'm sorry. Job, at the end of his life, or, and the end of all this temptations and everything that was going on, he, he got more than double back. Because he wound up having 20 children and then double everything that he had. Because he had goats and he had camels and he had horses. And you know what I mean. He had uh, sheep and goats and, you know. So, and he had 10 children. And I don't know how many. It didn't say nothing about the women. After okay, that. that's what, that's all fine, Dandy. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not trying to be smart here. here. Here's the bottom line. You made a key point. Mm -hmm. It's either you have a relationship with God or you don't. Well, that's here, what that's it, all about. Here, 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 here's where we're going with this. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is always near. It is up to us as individuals to have a relationship with God. Earlier in the class, I talked about a Torah guide. Well, you know, God wrote this word for a reason. Yeah. All his words are right here that he has spoken to us. 
He says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It's real simple. Quit playing church, get off your behinds, and get your nose into the word of God and do something. You sit there and people complain. And I forget what scripture is. They were waiting on Moses and told Moses, come back and tell us what God told you. I won't tell you exactly what that is. People are being lazy. They're depending on somebody else to do the work for them. Again, get off your seats and go do the work yourself. Quit relying on these pastors and everything because you don't even know if they're teaching you the truth. How can you know if they're teaching you the truth or not if you don't have your nose in the Word of God? I can tell you the moon's purple. And you probably believe it because you don't have your nose in the Word of God. Now, I'm not a preacher, but I'm going to tell you what God is telling me. Quit playing church. That's why he said the harvest is ready, but there's very, very few workers. Quit playing church. Sorry for the noise, but... The Word of God is important. And I'm going to say this, because the Holy Spirit's all over me right now. You're either going to go one or two places. You're either going to go to heaven, or you're going to go to hell. Period. And this one save all you save, sorry people, it's not true. It's a lie. Because here's why. Why is Jesus telling you to repent? Why is John the Baptist saying, repent? There's multiple scriptures here that tells you to repent. You cannot go out and say you're saved and commit sin, then expect to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that. He said in Matthew chapter 4, 4, Man must live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. God does not speak evil. He does not speak no lies. He speaks truth and love. That's what he teaches and preaches. Now, if you have a health problem or a sickness or something, God said he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And if you're reading God's word, not nowhere, nowhere in his word did he say for his child to be sick. Nowhere. Now you take the authority that God has given you, his word. We know the authority comes from Jesus. We know the power comes from the Holy Spirit. When you walk in the authority of God, and you know who you are in him, you won't have no sickness. People will be getting up out of their wheelchairs, getting out of their walkers and walking. You won't have chest pains. You won't be sick all the time. This is how important it is to have a relationship with God. This is why God is so near to us because he loves us with everything he has. He even gave his son, his only begotten son to us to die on the cross to pay a bill that we couldn't pay. It's that simple. And like one pastor said, he said every time the devil speaks, he tells a lie. Well, I know one thing, that's true. But I know every time that God speaks to me, it's the truth. And there's power behind his word when he speaks to me. And how do I know this? I'll say this real quick. When I was in the military, we had a cadet that came from West Point. We made him paint our room. I wasn't in church. I was, I was living in the world. Well, I took a year off and came back home, rejoined the military again, went to South Korea, and talking to my buddies in the chow line to go get something to eat, here's this lieutenant looking at me. Well, this lieutenant is that same cadet who I had paint my room for me. We're talking over 10,000 miles away and four years later. Don't think God knows where you're at and don't think he won't make you get a payback for what you did to somebody because he did it to me. I ended up doing 100 push-ups for this lieutenant because of what I did to him. So before you think about doing evil to somebody, you better make sure you got your heart right with God and have God tell you what he wants you to do. 
So now we're going to go on to Psalms 73, 28. Jace, if you don't mind reading that. Sure. <clears throat> but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, and I have made it clear all thy works. There you go. It is good to draw near to God. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go to Psalms 75.1. Unto thee, O oh God, do we give thanks. Until thee do we give thanks. For that my, my name is near, thy wondrous works declare. There you go. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 151. No, I went too far. So seventy-five one. What did you say about that one? I'm still writing down for you. Seventy-five one was. Says, "Give thanks. We give thanks to you, God. We give thanks to you, for your name is near. People tell about your wondrous works. In other words, they're bragging about God and His works and what He does." And, and and because he's doing all this wonder and works, the people are giving thanks to. Him. So here we go again, giving thanks to God for everything He's done for us. And, and you that's, gotta remember though what the back part too. I mean, if He done something years ago, keep on with that in the memory and keep testifying of that. That's what they are saying too. Keep on testifying of all of His wondrous work, not the ones that are just today, but all of them. Exactly, exactly. You got one nineteen, one fifty one. Oh yes, sir. It says, Thy ought near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. There you go. So he's telling you, again, you are near, Lord, and all your commands are true. He's telling you he is not a liar. He's telling you, if I'm telling you are healed, it's true that you are healed. Now believe it with your heart. Believe it with everything you have. Heart, soul, spirit. Believe it. Don't pick it up. Then turn around and say, oh, I'm not healed. Like this guy down in Florida with the one church we were going to. The man kept on asking God for brand new teeth. He got brand new teeth from God. Then he turned around and said, I can't believe it. God took the teeth away. Because you just called God a liar. When you say, I can't believe it. You're saying, God, I don't think you can do it. That's my opinion. That's how I look at it. Do. Yeah, go ahead. It is yeah. important to also realize is that when you ask for God for something, that He might answer your prayer, but not in the way that you want Him to do it. But He just answered your prayer. And sometimes you got to look at yourself and say, "Why am I?" Because I didn't get what I wanted, but you got what we prayed for. There you but go. That's good. You got to look at yourself and say, "You know what, Lord, I'm sorry. I was thinking of me and not of you." There you go. That, His that... timing is not always our timing. Remember. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Exactly. Very. Thank you, Jason. That is very, very good. Thank you, both of you. Actually, uh, next one is Psalms one forty five eighteen. That's very, very good. Yeah, because you can get frustrated. I mean, it's extremely easy to get frustrated. You know, shoot. If you know, our yeah. day, one day to him is a thousand years, or you know what I mean. Uh, we can get frustrated. The Lord and I, and to all them that called upon him, to all that upon him in trust. There you go. What did you say, in trust? In trust. And in the CSB it says, The Lord is near all who call out to him. All who call out to him with integrity. In other words, with with a pure heart. You're, you're actually crying out to God and say, God, I need you. I need you. I cannot do it on my own. I cannot do it on my own. Well, see, when you cry out like that and ask for his help, and then he helps you, that creates more faith. I and mean, it strengthens your faith. Right? Yeah, it, it does strengthen your, your face. Because now 
who are you relying on? You're relying on God. You're giving everything to God and say, God, I'm, I'm surrendering everything to you. I need you to guide me. I need you to take me where you want me to go. Well, it's just like somebody that's brand new, don't know nothing, don't even know if there exists a God, but they say, oh, if, okay, God, if you are real, show me yourself. See, God knows your heart, and he will show himself, right? Mm -hmm. Or Jesus, I've heard of you, but I don't know who you are, and I don't even know if you're real or not. Show me, and they know at your heart that your heart is pure, and and it's really in tune to him. It's really wanting answers, right? So you're calling with a pure heart. And you could have never thought of it like that, but you are calling with a pure heart. And then also you got to step out on faith and leave it on faith. Yeah, and you know that's very hard too, like you said. The his time is not our time, and so. Even if you have faith, you know, I'm the same as anybody else, even if you have faith, right? That's why we have to continue to grow, and that's why I brought up those stories, you know? It's the faith and knowing who you are in Christ, knowing what authority he gave you, you know, when you accepted him, knowing that Holy Spirit indwelling gives you power to be victorious in this life. And once you, uh, once you start to get a glimmer of the truth, you know, of the who you are, in fact, you're going to become bold. You're going to stand up like a soldier stands up, and you're going to be extremely bold. And it's not going to be wimpy words, well, maybe, I think so. Maybe, let's see, let's ask him, and let's see. You're going to say, no, your word says, this is where I've, I'm coming to and what I'm trying to get in my own brain, you know, because i got a thick skull, too, you know. I can say something, and I say it, and I mean it. But if I don't get this into my heart and into my spirit, the the uh, truths and the and the and the and the promises, you see what I mean? Like I just spouted out. If I didn't get them into my spirit and hadn't been working on them for a while to get them into my spirit, in other words, studying the Word, spending time with the feet of the cross, you know, the cross, then I wouldn't be able to spout that off. But when I talk and when I spout it off, it's true. It's coming from my heart. It's not coming from I only not not only know it in my brain, but I know it in my heart, and I believe it. You know, and that's where we have to come. When you say that all these scriptures we've been reading here, it says well, the um, the word of God has come near. You know what I mean? We are the word of God come near. Now it's our job to accept. Exactly. Exactly. What's the next one? I'm going to go ahead and end the class here because this is going longer than what I thought it would. And so we're going to go ahead and pray. We will finish this up next week as part two. And there's more to this class. There's other parts to it, but I want to do one part at a time. What I want to pray for right now is, you know, it's not that God will reach out and touch you for all who are going to watch this video. I, I pray that God will touch you and open your eyes and, and teach you who you are in his in him. Now, you know, the, the devil's going to try to come in and tell you otherwise. Tell you that God doesn't love you. Why, if God loved you, why is he letting these things happen? Here's the first thing you need to do. First of all, recognize who you are in Christ. Two, Jesus gave you the authority. Listen, he gave you the authority to tell Satan and his demons to get behind you. To leave you. Leave you alone. Use that authority. Use that authority that Jesus has given you. And call on the warring angels. Ask God to send down a legion of warring angels to protect you, your house, your family, your loved ones, your finances. And the enemy must flee. Tell them I'll post suggestions under there. What to do. And if you have any questions, just post them on the below the video in the comment and I'll section. Answer them. I'm going to uh, also in the description. I'm going to put a post up with you telling you what prayer to say and to what to do as to anointing yourself and your family and your uh, everyday objects and uh, the prayers for it too. So that'll be on there. Yes. So we're going to pray right now. And Jesus, we thank you for everybody here in this class. My nephew Jason, my wife. Kathy, and we, we thank you for watching the video, and we ask you to bless everybody who will watch the video. And God, we ask you to open their eyes and teach them and set their hearts on fire for your word to, to have your knowledge 
and become mighty, mighty soldiers in your word. And Lord, we just thank you for everything you've given us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I got one question. How are you going to give that to me, and how can I take that and put it on my YouTube and upload it? He's going to send it to your email, right? I'm going to actually upload it on your YouTube.